Okay, good morning, folks. Here we are, Sunday morning edition of cleaning up the painting table. <laughs> and it looks like the zoom function of the camera carried over from, yes from yesterday's session. So let's fix that. That's actually kind of nice because I'm not going to have to change that every time. But we're going to zoom out here for a little bit. Let's clean these guys off our table. Why are these guys all over the table? Well, we did a unboxing of these Essex figures last night. Check that out if you haven't. It's only eight minutes long. It won't hurt. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and put them away. Um, and actually probably put them together, the, the uh, Moldavian guys while we have them. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna have the command that's in the two packs are here. So I'm going to bag them together. I don't necessarily have to put them right back in the bag that they came in. We can just use the same ones. We can get more figures in there than what come in there. I have so many of these bags. You'd think I'd sold cocaine or something like that. Uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put the horses in one and mix and match the horses anyways. And uh, we just put all the command horses in one. Actually, I need to jack this up a little. There we go. I have the I have the chair down as far as it can go when I'm painting, so that I'm sitting upright. But not really doesn't really work well when I'm doing this. And here's the commanders. And I gotta put my glasses on so I can see. The back and forth of glasses, no glasses. Okay, here's the Polish halberdiers. We'll mess with, we'll mess with these poles right after we're done with the um, both command sets. And the camp. And the castle. We gotta get that done. We gotta get all that stuff done first. Then we'll mess with the poles. These are all the horses that were the cavalry. So we'll put all of them together. We move this out of the way. I believe somebody's here. Somebody knocking at the door. Good morning. It's early, certainly an early start. Uh, it's about normal. I almost got a little earlier, but I'm uh, I went to bed by 10, and then at midnight, I was up. I couldn't go to sleep for an hour and a half, and it's weird because you'd think I'd had, that's what would happen if I had like a Starbucks or something late. I don't know that I had any caffe, I, don't, I didn't have any coffee at all last, yesterday. And I just, well, whatever I had this in the morning, but that didn't carry over until night. I don't know. Um... It can't really be because I was thinking about stuff because I was pretty much empty-headed yesterday. So, um, all right, so these are all... These are all poles. So let's put the poles together. Okay, uh, these aren't. Completely. Poles. Poles. Let's just put all the new figures together because there is there are... Our, Balak, our uh, Moldavian commander is in there. This is the figure that I have to paint along with finishing the standard bearer. And we need to do a flag also today, but that'll be off camera. I'm going to be doing it digitally. And what I normally do with the digital camera, with the digital um, flags, I like painting flags with paint. But what happens is, if you have to, if you have a flag, I'm going to go ahead and put these away while we're talking. Um, um, when you have to paint two sides that are equal, equally the same of a complicated design, it becomes a real pain in the butt. So what I've been doing is downloading a picture off of a Google image search of a flag that's about what I want anyways. And then going in in a paint program on my tablet. I have a computer slash tablet. I have a computer that breaks down into a tablet with a pen. And I 
digitally modify or I digitally paint that particular um, image. Um, it's not difficult, and I, I'm not a tech guy, so I, I think everybody can do it. Um, I'm not a technical person. What that means is things, programs should work easy, okay? It should be easy. It shouldn't be torturous. Um, you know, if you've taken college classes, it should not be difficult to use computer programs if they're programmed correctly. Um, so, to give you an example, um, let's say uh, I don't even have anything remotely flag related. Let's say I had an image and what can I use? What can I use? What can I use? Uh, all right, let's use this pen here. All right, I love the 80s. Wish we were back in the 80s as an adult, not as a kid. I, I don't want to be a kid again, please. <laughs> but let's say I wanted to, this was a flag or whatever. And I wanted to shade this. Um, and like in particular, I was worried about the heart. So, and this is kind of how I wanted to do it, but I wanted it with like some extra highlighting. I would take this and then find this color and then darken it a lot and then drop like a really dark color on top of it and then start doing bringing lighter shades and shade along as it is and then save it that way. So I'm using the same technique that I normally use in my painting. It's just digitally and then print it out. Now, the one thing is, is you kind of have to tinker with it a little bit because you have to use less subtle shades between layers of the color between levels of the color for the for the printer to pick it out so um, um, anyhow um, yeah so it's not difficult it's not difficult at all um, it just it's actually kind of fun to a degree and then you can just flip the image and then print that out uh, Usually the thing I do the most is I just take that image and I put it on an Excel spreadsheet. And that way it's easy to pull it off. And, you know, if this is your Excel spreadsheet, I'll put one maybe this big over here and then a larger one and then a smaller one, different one. So when you print it out, you print it out one time and you go, oh, okay, that's the one that fits the best on that flag. And that's it. Um, because Pete's flags doesn't make flags for everybody. And the Pete's, Pete's flag stuff is amazing. He's a... Some of my flags for my uh, early Renaissance period are for him, and he just he does fabulous work. And um, but he only makes a very limited amount of stuff. And I I like painting them, hand painting them. Um, but you know, if you're doing something complicated like this flag is coming up is going to be complicated for Dracula. It's going to have a dragon bear manner. I haven't decided exactly which dragon banner I'm going to do. There's several of them to choose from. Um, but it's going to be mostly black. So it's going to, not going to be a very exciting looking flag from a color standpoint. But, um, but anyhow, so that, that is the digital thing. And uh, I just use a program called um, Sketchbook. It's made by Autodesk. And it's pretty easy to use. I don't read manuals on how to use those programs. I should be able to just start tinkering and it work uh, if they made the program correctly. Um, once you're familiar with some of the basic stuff, then you can read about how to do some complicated things. But I can't stand a program that you have to read a manual from to get started from day one. You should be able to just start doing really basic things with just clicking on stuff, with just having average intelligence. Um, like I said, if, it, if you can't do that, well, then they didn't program the thing correctly. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Dirk. Good evening to you. All right. So let's look at what we got here. These are also Polish war wagons, so we're going to put them in the Polish box. We need to clear some of the space out this morning before we get started. Here's another Polish war wagon. Here's the Polish war wagon cruise. All right, now we can start seeing some of this stuff that's here. These are extra horses by themselves. I'm not sure why they're there. Um, 
extra bag for Eastern Hordes. We'll move them to the side. They're not. Um, we're done with the Eastern Hordes for for this army. Oh, another cannonball I found. Oh man, he could have been on the artillery piece stand. Oh well. All right. What is this pile of stuff over here? Let's just bring all these guys over here. All right, what's this? Oh, these are also Polish axemen from Old Glory. I don't think I'm going to use those guys, though. Here's another artillery piece. Let's clean this crap up. Here's another Moldavian horseman. I guess these are leftovers. Two Polish crossbowmen. Can they have a Saloy stand? I don't think they can. I think the only foot that the, that the Poles can have is a couple of eight bows, eight, eight crossbows, and uh, a fast blade, um, or war wagons. I guess war wagons are foot. They're not foot, but they're considered foot. Okay, this is a Hussar. This is a commander I'm not going to use. Another Dra Dracula figure. I don't know why all these guys got thrown in the pile. The Moldavians are not going to have any barding on their horses. Okay, I've decided that. Um, I, I had already decided that. I just hadn't told anybody, I guess. Um... I don't think I did. So I'm going to leave all the horses that don't have any barding. These will just be used for other armies. All the all the barded horses are pretty much interchangeable, as long as they're European style. Okay, so here's what we got left. Here's what we got left. This is what I wanted to get to because I do need to put. I as well throw these horses in with them because they're the same style. Oh, interloper. Get out of here. <laughs> okay, so we need. Um, I thought I had done this before. I guess I. Ha I guess I hadn't done it. I guess I hadn't properly sorted these folks. Um, okay. Um, so we need two knights and then the and then the uh, knight general. So. Um, I can already tell you it's probably going to be one of those two. So one of these two guys, and one this guy's got chain. I want to use guys that have plate. Um, okay. And these guys will have a flag that has the bull's head on it. Okay, so we want one guy facing this way, one facing the other way. I got lots of them facing this way, but only one facing the other way that's wearing plate. So those are my two candidates. Um, two horses for them. I don't want this pose. It seems a little light, light on their feet. Seems all right. Let's bring the commander out here. You like the blind Russian aggression? I did too. There were some cool games. to get that out while the while the title was still fresh it's an opportunity we talked about doing blind general with with um, it was a mixture of the our two favorite things Mitch really likes collision course and I really like blind general so it was a way to combine the two I'm pretty much convinced blind general makes everything better 
it doesn't matter if it's against, you know, if, if, if it doesn't make my, the army that I have perform better at that time. That's irrelevant to me. Um, I'm there for a good game, not necessarily to win. And, uh, I actually had to almost ban a comment. Um, somebody had made a comment that was political in nature. Hey, I was just using a humorous, uh, a humorous title to that. That not that not that's too far off the uh, my version of reality. Because there's, I guess, there's a different version of reality now these days. You know, there's uh, people want to believe different things, but this guy wanted to do a political comment. Before I got a chance to ban it, he took it down. So. Um, These horses, these three horses are kind of static. Oh, this one's got a yoke on them. I don't want to use it, one with a yoke. I didn't even notice that. There's a yoke here around his neck. That's why I take my glasses off. I wouldn't be able to see. Okay, this one has some trappings kind of on the horse. So it's a little fancier. So that's looking like it's probably going to be the commander's horse. Okay, and they're not all the same... So I, I don't I'd, I'd like to use horses that are either all animated or all kind of static because it's like one horse is going really fast and the other ones are just sitting there. So um, I think these are the three horses that we're going to do, and these two are going to be riding those two. And the commander, let's look at the commanders here that we got. Um, I think we can safely move these all in one pile. I got to do this anyway. So and these guys are up next. So let's see what we got commander wise. Pretty sure I know which guy I'm going to do. Which is this guy right here. I mean, that's why I bought the pack. Yeah, that's who the commander is going to be. And I'm not going to put a little cape on him or whatever. These guys, this is actually a really cool guy. This is guy has got like a late period arm met. Let's see. Let's see if we can use the zoom function on this. To make this more, I have thought to bring the third column on. Try to do it without knowing the pips. It's successful. I had a thought to bring the third column on. Try to do it without knowing the pips. If successful, costs four as usual. If unsuccessful, costs one. Oh, I like that. Well, we had to figure that stuff out on the fly. So I think it turned out okay considering we were doing things on the fly but yeah i like that i like the i like the um push your luck mechanisms in a game i do like it other people may not like that and i'm a control freak i'm a control freak and i like that mechanism because i like a challenge let me move this thing out of the way so i can see what's going on where can i put this that it's not can i make it smaller no Okay. Let's see. Let's find the camera. This is a nice figure. He's got a nice late period armet. He's got some chain mail under there. He's got... It's, it's nice. He's got detailing on the bottom of the cape. I've never seen that. Almost like some ruffles or stuff. So this is a big guy. This is definitely a monarch. So we're going to save this guy for... Maybe the Polish commander. Maybe that's that's what I'm probably going to do. The Polish king. And then uh, we also got a guy here who's... I believe these helmets are called helm skulls. Essex makes some nice figures. Once you get over the fact that some of them are stumpy, okay, they're, they're a little stumpy. I mean, these guys aren't that much, but some of the foot guys are. Okay, but they're cast well, and they have some funky poses if you buy the damn army pack and you get whatever you get. But if you get to choose, like, I don't mind having extra figures. Um, yeah, we're going to use this guy. And these guys will be used shortly with, with the poles. Now, the Polish general... 
I am not going to build now until I do the Polish army by itself. Because the Allies, even though it is one stand of the general, I don't want to have the general on it because it's distracting. Like, oh, what's the general doing over there? Well, that's actually not the general. It's the ally of the, that happens to be the general's type. So I try to avoid those confusions by um, not muddying the waters with stuff like that. Ah, the Russians are back. Whatever that means. Don't, don't you guys have a, a war to fight? Don't start a war when you're commenting on my page. I was in bed and I was trying to watch some of the footage, but I, I don't want them to, I don't want to hear really the news of the blah, 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 what they're telling me because I find everything suspect. And I'm not a conspiracy person, contraire, I just don't, you know, the last 15 years just trust, just prove that to me that you can't trust anything anybody tells you. You gotta look everything over. But I just want to see footage of like tanks and stuff. You know, I didn't need to see killing, just I want to see vehicles or knocked out vehicles. Saw a few of those and went to bed and thank goodness that's not playing here. That's not happening here. All right, let's put this guy here. But yeah, everything's suspect. You could be seeing footage and it's from a totally different thing, you know? Okay, we need to glue these guys down. So, let's grab. to watch any kind of footage and the troll the trolling there is insane the trolling is, is insane you want those live feeds some of the news channels have them and other ones don't but the ones that have them you know they'll have people that'll go on there and comment something like Putin is a hero like that's about that's about the most outlandish thing you can post on there. <laughs> like I said, uh, that's the problem with the in internet. It gives everybody a voice, and some people don't deserve one because they're out to con they're out to pass on wrong information or just be nefarious. Just being completely nefarious. So. Various people shouldn't get a voice that we all have to listen to. Where is my, um, that'd be like if I, you know, give you fake reviews or something like that. Well, I couldn't live with myself. I tell you that right now. I could not live with myself. Like Joe said the other day, I think it was yesterday, came on, I said, oh, Tony the Great. I'm not Tony the Great. I'm Tony the Honest. I don't want to be the great. We all have our faults. I try to not make the same mistakes I do all the time, but we're all human, unfortunately. But Tony, be honest. I don't want to pass on misinformation. Where the hell is my El Scrapo? Makes no sense. It's big. Hey, good thing I'm organized. I really wouldn't find it then. Well, remember how I say sometimes you, you have to be persistent or you won't find something? Well, sometimes you gotta give that up because it's not that critical to do it right now. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know where the hell the I don't know where the hell the file is. 
We'll do it the old school way. That's enough for that one. Try to find ones that don't need a ton of the stuff taken off. Just think of it as scraping off plaque off your teeth. Hopefully you don't have this much. I just thought about that because I went to the dentist recently. And I actually enjoy going to the dentist. I usually try to have to fight falling asleep. And it's relaxing. I went on thir Tuesday, Thursday? I don't know. It was the day after the war started, and I wanted to see. They have this TV going. There. And I said, okay, can we change the channel? Because they had it playing constantly on old old. US TV shows like you know leave it to beaver or something like that. No, we can't change the channel. They're like all the TVs are on that. I'm like, I don't want to see that shit. You know? <laughs> oh, all right, let's get rid of this. Let's go flush this Russian. Or Ukrainian. I don't care where they're from. We don't need that. We don't need that nonsense here. Uh, report. Unwanted commercial content or spam. All right, let's zoom this camera back out. We'll zoom back in one time. Get on this. Come on. Having trouble with the mouse. I don't know if the battery is dying on this thing or, but I'm having to click multiple times before I get what. I'm wanting on there. Okay, let's. I think we had a nice zoom function yesterday when we were paying the details, so we're still going to try to do that. All right, let's get super glue out. I don't have to worry about it moving on me. Oh, I got to do this too. And then I'm going to have to get this is stuff I have to do anyway, so I might as well get it over with now. That way, it's ready to roll when I'm done with this last figure. Hold this down. Now, the, al the alloy that Essex Miniatures come with is softer than than most. They've they still have some of the the old alloy. Seems like everybody's gone to a higher. Not higher strength, but less flexibility. Maybe it has less lead content in it, but the Essex is still kind of on a soft side. Okay, it stands by itself. That's a sign that it passed. Let's go ahead and see if there's any significant. I tried using a file for this, but it's just too big. The X-Acto knife just works better. That's the one that's the that's the that's the generals because it has these little detailing here on the horses, on the um, Essex ninety two. This was done in nineteen ninety two, I guess. Yeah, they've cast these horses many times. Maybe they have multiple molds for the same horse. This is the Moldavian Command Nightstand. These other guys balance pretty well. It was just that that particular one. Might as well do these 
guys too. There's a line there. I'm not going to replace these guys with pit. Ooh, let me think about that. The guy holding the flags definitely has to be replaced. And I did not buy the pack of banner bearers. I would have if I would have known both command packs were the same. So I bought these two command packs. I thought they had different commanders in them. And um, they're both the same. The only difference is one has armored horses, one has unarmored. Well, I have plenty of... Um, uh, one has barred and one has unbarred. And I have plenty of both already. The pack could have come without horses. I would have been fine. So had I known that, I would have bought the, um, the uh, banner bearers. But... The thing is, is when you have a commander who's not armed necessarily as a knight, he's the commander, and you have a banner bearer who's basically just holding a flag, now you have one other figure on the stand that has to represent the fact that this is a knight stand. So I actually like the fact that it has two knights on it. Um, I just need to decide which one of these two guys is going to hold the banner. And I think it's going to be this one, because if memory serves me right, if I screw it up, Always leave yourself an out, right? If I screw it up, I have more of this pose. This is the only figure that I have of this pose. But this guy's lance is kind of... I may have to actually do the opposite of that. I'm going to make this guy the banner bearer. And I'm not going to replace this guy's lance. It's, it's a little bendy, but it's solid enough. Stephen the Great or somebody like that. Okay, here we go. Chop. Chop. And chop. Now, a couple things. Is this the sharp one? Yeah. Let's put a little divot here in the center. Okay. So that when I, whatever I put there, it's going to end up grabbing and be centered on it. If you end up trying to do it without that. really hard to get it in the center. Now, the problem that I have with some of these Oh, we got a zoom function. Let's show you guys. What the hell, right? The problem with some of these drill bits, I had bought a bunch of really small drill bits. Man, we're, we can get in close now. Let's see. There we go. The problem with some of these drill bits is I bought some really small drill bits uh, before the boycott, so you know where they're made. And they're just... They're just shitty. There's no other way to say it. They're just shitty. Um, this guy, this is a pen that shouldn't even be there. Um, well, I actually may end up being what I will use for the flag. Let's see. Where did it? Where did it go? Here it is. Let's see what the length of this thing is. How long are these? Same length. Yeah, this is what we're going to use as the flag. This is what we're going to use as the flag then. These work, these work nicely, these little pins, and they're just solid steel. Anyhow, um, I, I had some. 
but these are legitimate ones here. That well, that one's not. Um, you know, they have an end on them. Let's see if I can show you guys. You gotta be careful what you buy. Some things you shouldn't buy sight unseen. Okay. This is what a normal, and I need to move this little camera a bit from here because I can't see. There we go. Look at the end of this drill bit. That's what it normally looks like. It's tapered down, just like this one, just like this one. All these. Now order these damn multi-pack of Chinese drill bits. Look at the ends of it. Let me get it on, on camera here. I don't know if you can make that out, but they're totally flat. They end totally flat and they just can't grab, but they're the right size, but they're just, you can't get it to bite. They're very difficult to get to bite, so I'm still going to attempt to try it. So if it, if you're wondering why I'm having trouble doing this step, it's because that, unfortunately. wanted to hey use some unfortunately this zoom function is I got to click it every time I do it so if it looks like it takes me a while though why is that damn Russian comment still there well it's not on here okay luckily it's not a pornographic link or something like that we don't need that on this channel there's lots of channels that can you can you can do that sort of thing on. And okay, so I've, I've got it started. And these things also break very easy. So I just need to get it to bite. And I need to hold this arm as well because you do not want it to bend. Because I'll end up putting more pressure than to get this thing through. And um, it'll end up bending this arm. Okay. Now let's go to let's go to one that's maybe a little bit bigger. See, this is a, something I would love to pick up at a store. So I could, you know, I don't mind paying more. But you could just keep ordering thing after thing and get the same garbage over and over again. Okay, here's a bigger one. Now that we've got a, a hole kind of going in the right direction. See, it's not, it's not going in at all. It's not moving. It's not budging it. I had this problem kind of last time. The smallest one that I have that's a legitimate one is still too big. I think it's, it's like bigger than the hand. I had a hell of a time with the minifigs ones. All because the end is blunt. I should have just returned them had I realized that. But this is the smallest ones I make from at a hardware store here in person. I think this one's just going to be too big. It's going to eat up the entire hand. Let's see. What did I do last time? And 
this is a soft alloy. So if I was using something that was Somebody actually didn't know you could use the end of an exacto blade for that. Yep. Yep. We've known that since the late '80s. Come on, bite, damn it! All right. Well, that tells me one other thing. tells me that I may have another one here. No, and if it's not there, I don't. All right. Take a drink. I'm telling you, this is the, the persevering, perseverance and modeling channel. We encounter stuff all the time that might cause other people to give up. It's too big. I push that through there, we won't have a hand at all. We'll get through this. It's just one hand. And it's, it's happened. But the old glory ones have bigger hands, so that's allow you some of these other. It's, it's gonna have to be one of these damn Chinese ones is gonna have to work because you can't use the other ones, they're just too darn big. It's just pull some of those filings out. You can tell when the metal is coming out. turn around and pull it from the other side but then it's not likely that they're going to match let me let's do let's do a safety measure It's not going to work. It needs to be something a little bit more solid.
That's what we want. Not my first rodeo. I think you need things to go wrong once in a while to just keep, you know, not figure out how to deal with it. It's not pulling any of the filings out. None of it. All right. Still bent a little bit. All right, let's try a different tactic. Make it progress. That's what I'm afraid of though. It's not it's not gonna line up perfectly through there. How deep are we in? Man, we're close. We're really close to the two. See, you can't give up. You can't give up. The bad guys win with if you give up. All right, tell me it goes through. If not, we'll... Well, that straightened it out. That was nice. close. It's close. All right. All right. 
Good. That was. Um, I got two exacto knives. I don't know why I'm making myself difficult, my life difficult with this. The sides of this cut, but the front doesn't, then that's what we want. Let's do this again. Let's anchor this over the edge. Let's enlarge this hole. Hallelujah. All right, perfect. Now, does it fit now or does it need to be even bigger? It fits now. And sometimes I've had this hand end up getting cut and not go all the way through. That's fine, as long as there's a, a post there for it to grab. Okay, and this is gonna be angled in such a way that we're going to put the base of it on his foot. Okay, so let's switch this out. I don't know how long this has taken, 30 minutes? Doesn't matter, it, some things just, you can fly through and sometimes things need some extra TLC to work. So, where's my nippers things? And we gotta make sure that, and I don't know where the hell my file went to. I have another one in here though. No, that one's too small. This, you have to make sure. And I, it, I may have already done this, but we gotta make sure that the, the edge is filed down or you're gonna draw blood. Okay, doesn't take much. Just take that sharp point. Obviously, if you fall on it and you get impaled, well, all bets are off. Fire in a hole. And then this, I would normally do the same thing with as well, but. Sometimes difficult situations, cut off the hand, glue the pole, then to the stump, reshape the hand with putty. Ooh. Oh dear. I'm a noob when it comes to putty. I really am. I've only used it a couple times and it doesn't scare me, but sorry that took so long, but hey, we had a win. Persistence is the key to victory. If you give up, you won't get to where you need to be. For sure. You may not always win, but you're not going to win if you don't try. Sunday morning philosophy there. step to that. Where did he go? There he is. Yeah, sorry it took so long, but we're going to have to do this immediately. So I'd rather do it now. And it's going to give you time to to cure. Okay, so that's, how, that's where we're going to put it. That's how we're going to put it. Okay, and this will be epoxy then. See? Even so, I still went under my skin a little bit. No blood, though. Ha -ha! Joke's on you, you pin. All right. Put this back. 
clean this back up and we can go back to where we were. I need to I need to find some of these drill bits that have the ends that aren't square. This damn piece of crap drill bits are no good. Calls for a drink. Of course it's tea. That's one way to go back to bed. All right, let's zoom this out. Yeah, I'm a noob when it comes to putty. Um, especially at this scale. So, first things first, let's move the horses onto here. That's a little disturbing because it's not like I'm working on this hobby stuff anywhere other than here. And as a matter of fact, it hasn't been used since the last time I was being filmed using it. It's not like it's something I use all the time. I didn't have one for many years. That's how not useful it is. All right. Now, we're going to have to let these guys set for a little bit. Because the next step is after these guys are glued on the um, the super glue sets, I'm going to epoxy the figures onto the horse. So now we'll go back to painting. Whew, not go back to it, but you know we haven't painted any at all today. Let's move these guys over here off camera, and move the riders over here off camera. Whew. Wouldn't expect the net challenge today, but. I think I've earned a coat this morning. I'm going to go grab one. I'll be right back. And I actually like, I got the zoom camera fixed at the right time as I was able to show some of the stuff on that shield guy here. And um, do I have to tinker with the color again also? Because I had to do that as well. I want you guys to see exactly what I see or you're just, you're missing the boat. here no I need to go here and we want to do daylight okay stayed on daylight how low can we go Sometimes it's easier to move the camera. You know, sometimes. It's just so weird to move it the opposite of how you need it to go. Yeah. You can look at uh, whoever this guy is, Treblinski. Great right back.
Now I'll find the extra exacto knife thing. You ever feel like you're one short wagon ride from the insane asylum? I'm not there yet, but I'm making steady progress. And like I said, I don't have my stuff that disorganized. And finally, for those of you guys who are on Facebook that I'm always complaining about, man, here's the latest things I figured. Please ignore the crappy picture quality. Something was set on my camera. Maybe it was all set on my new camera since I've had it. My new camera, I mean my new phone. I've had the phone for about a year and a half. Had the wrong megapixel setting on it. And I wasn't taking pictures in full. So I had this uber powerful camera and wasn't using all of, all of it, so. Typical. Yeah, I think the shield came out really well. But that's what I'm seeing, and it's still blur. You know, obviously with the naked eye, you can see. Oh, that's what you do. You move this little cardboard thing around. Whoa. Yeah, see, see how the, this is an example of this light that I'm painting with is so awesome, but it also uh, washes everything out because look how it looks like there and then we move it over here see how it's see how it changed I'm not looking at it like that it doesn't look like that to me it looks like like that so that's a more accurate picture of it anyhow um, it's easy as pie you just gotta be this the painting the shield infinitely easier than what I just did with the lance infinitely easier. Okay. Let's, um, we may need to zoom out a little bit. We are going to paint detail stuff, but I think I can leave this here and you can see, I still see the text you guys are writing underneath it. So I want to respond to you because, you know, if you're just writing shit and I'm not commenting on it, you know, it's like kind of like writing sentences when you were a kid. Like, why am I being tortured for this? <laughs> I mean, that's how I think about it. Why interact with people that people aren't going to interact back? You know, same thing. With comments. You guys put comments on my on my videos and stuff like that. I try to reply with a comment or at least a thumbs up or something, so you guys know that you know you're not just pissing on a wall. Somebody's actually you know listening to your comments. So, assuming they're not negative and. I, I really don't have much of a problem with that. I really don't have much of a problem with spam, um, even though you guys probably have seen it from time to time. These, but um, and people with negative comments because I don't go to other people's stuff and put negative things. And there's lots of stuff I don't like. But let's see, what are we gonna paint? Be painting this guy? I'm probably too still too zoomed in. There, let's go like this for the time being. And then when we get something really close we need to show you, we'll go in and throw that out. Okay, so we need some, um, we need the saber case for this guy, his boots. It looks like, it looks like his boots go all the way up to everything we can see. So let's just assume that that's the case. And we're going to go light color boots since it's kind of a dark color horse. And our candidate is um, going to be this khaki here from Coat the Arms. I think I would have tried making a decal for that shield. I'm not sure I could paint it that small. I'm not sure I can make a decal. <laughs> I'm not getting into that. And I enjoy doing it. So. Um. I don't want to get into making decals. I don't want to get into 3D printing things. I don't have time for everything, so I might as well just focus on what I enjoy doing. All right. 
All right, cooked yarns. What a pleasant smell. And there's hardly any smell at all. I don't know if I'll use Little Big Band Studios decals again. I might. It just... I'm surprised the Russians came out as well as they did. I was having really second thoughts about it. The, the fact that you can't adjust them drives me bananas, you know, because, you know, we try to get things perfect, but stuff happens where you have to correct it. And if you're telling me right off the bat you can't correct it, I'm like, man, that is just, that's stressful. That's really very stressful. fact that you can make mistakes and fix them and the only inconvenience is, is you are halting your forward progress on your project you know which none of us want to do but mistakes are going to happen but the fact that now you have some kind of a medium that you can't fix you got to get it right the first time that's really stressful and I'm not used to stressful in painting this is zero stress. Where you go to a smaller brush. We still have that sash we need to do on there. Half a half of mine to do it in white. Let's paint the scabbard. Let's punt on that. Paint the scabbard. Three nine and three plane seems to be gaining significant popular measures. I can't get into everything. That's a good way to put it. I can't get into everything either. And it's not cost. I mean not that I'm made of money. I'm just saying that there's only time and interest for so much. There's only so much time. Mm. I gotta take my med. I usually do. It's not life threatening, so it's not the end of the world.
this is my comment about the little big man decals. I'll bring it up again next week. I'm kidding. Um, they're counterintuitive. They're extremely counterintuitive. Uh, I take it you haven't, you've never used them before. So they're not traditional water slide decals. If they are, I'd have no gripe with them. Um, they're completely counterintuitive. And um, so you have this decal that you're looking at. Um, I'd go get them, but I'd, I'd have to do a little bit of hunting. Let me, let me pick the color for his, for his saber thing and, and we'll talk about it. They're well done. They're painted better than the people could possibly paint those things. Um, so, you know, unless you've got Michelangelo on your payroll, the, de the, the actual shields look better on the decal than they would in real life. They're, they're really, really high quality. Um, the problem is, is how they are applied. So when you get them, you get them on a decal sheet and you have this clear cellophane almost co uh, coating to it that sticks to the back of where the thing is. So you've got your decals here, and but all the decals, when you look at them, are in reverse, okay? And you've got this sheet protecting kind of the stickiness. So what you're supposed to do is the area where the decal is going to go, you need to paint it in white because otherwise the decals are going to be uh, transparent and uh, not very visible. Again, not a problem, right? You cut out the decal of, of where you want off of this sheet. You leave that sticky paper on top of it. it it's Calling it paper is not accurate because it's a plastic. It's like a plastic, uh, thin, really thin veneer over it. You cut it all the thing out. So now you've got this shape of this sh shield pattern or what have you. And you, the area where it's going to go, you paint it in white. Then you take the plastic thing off. And what you're seeing there is in full color. It's not dull or anything. And you pick it up and you flip it upside down. Because what you're actually seeing is actually the back side of the shield. So you flip it, you put it on the white area, and then you rub it down. Still, so far, no problem, right? Um, you add some water to the back of it. Uh, after you've done that, let it sit for like 30 seconds, just a little bit, um, and then peel the top layer off, which is now basically paper, okay? Because it's paper on one side with the decal and then the plastic sheeting. You'll pull off the plastic sheeting, apply it. Now it's just paper on top, but you can't see exactly how it's sitting on the spot. That's the problem. So once you add the water and peel the paper off, it might be off a little bit where it needs to be, and there's no way to adjust it. It's not a, it's not a water slide decal. Um, there may be a way to adjust it, but I don't know that there is. Um, I haven't tried putting Microsol or on it um, and doing it that way. So that's the problem I have with it is, is you're going you're going at it blind. The other thing is you got to be really careful because. If you make the white area where you're going to put it too big and you're like, oh, well, I, I got white that it, the decal didn't cover. Let me go in with black and clean it up. You got to be really careful because your black paint has to be dry enough that when it hits that decal, this is after you've applied the decal, you don't get capillary action. It pulls that black paint onto the white area where you do want it underneath the decal and darkens that area of the decal. So, the main problem is it's not adjustable. That's really the problem with it is it's not adjustable. It's high quality. They're, they're beautiful. They're absolutely gorgeous things. Um, now, they look really glossy when you put them on there. But then you do your flat coat and stuff. They, they look spectacular. It just They're not adjustable. Now, maybe it's a bigger problem with 15s because we don't have a big margin of error. Um... But, and their flags are even crazier system to do. But um, I say I won't use their decals, but you know, 
I won't use their decals mainly because I like painting shields. You know, it's not like I, de I detest painting shields or that I'm not good at it, you know. So, personally, I like Big Big Man. The color designs are great, but it takes a lot of practice to get them right. And I mean a lot of practice. Yeah, I think I did. I think they turned out good for me, but it was just stressful. I don't, I'm not used to having stress in this hobby. It's the whole point in doing this hobby is it's not, it's stress reducing, not stress creating. And, um, but it's weird, man. It's weird. I filmed. I filmed when I did my Russians. One of my live painting sessions has me putting decals on the flag and everything. I'll have to find that maybe a pin it or whatever. Because that will give you a complete idea of what you're dealing with. It's just counterintuitive and non adjustable. That's that's the problem with Little Big Man Studios stuff. It's counterintuitive, meaning it's backwards. If you've done any kind of modeling and stuff, and I don't mean runway modeling, uh, I'm talking about, you know, plastic models. You'll remember that's it's the, you know, we've all done decals before. And um, it's it's not that way. So I'm not used to things in this hobby being unforgiving. You know, you're only allowed one fatal mistake. Maybe I should try to see if I can adjust them. I don't know if it's possible. Like, take a decal I don't like and put it on something and then try putting some microsol on it and see if I can move it around. And then if I ruin it, well, it's not a decal I wanted to. Easier at 28, some more figures have separate shields. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't say don't get them. Just... Go in with the knowledge that it's um, it's there's some trepidation. <laughs> it's a great product, though. I mean, they're they're better than anybody can paint them. Okay, um, they're definitely very high quality. No, the paper flags are super weird because the paper flags are the same way, except instead of putting the backing on a miniature, the backing is on a white piece of paper, which, you know, you have to cut out your decal, no problem, right? You have to ply it upside down to a white piece of paper, no problem, you don't have to paint the piece of paper, right? But to get the paper off the back of the decal, you have to wet the paper that's on the back of the decal while not wetting it too much so that the paper that's on the other side, in other words, the side where you applied the decal to, gets wet, because otherwise you end up with mush. So, if this is what, if this is what your flag is going to be on, you know, let's say this is a white piece of paper, and you want your flag on here, you take it, you cut out the, the design you want, and you, and you, and you, um, you know, you peel that plastic off, and you flip it, okay, and then you, Rub it, rub it. So here's you, here's your paper. Here's your paper with your decal on it. Okay, and you, you the decal's printed here. You flip it over here, and then you rub, 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 right. And then now you have to take water. You have to take water and wet this enough, this piece, so that it releases from the decal, but not wet this piece underneath. Because if you do, then you end up with mush. Now, I don't think. That's actually not as bad as the as the the shield decals because you don't have a you eliminated the adjustment problem. You don't have an adjustment issue with those because um, you just don't pre-cut the backing thing. Just leave it at regular. I mean, you you could cut it down to like maybe you know this size and then put the decal here in the middle and then trim it after you're done with everything. So you don't have that variable, but still you. You got to be careful. You got to do like, you know, use water and use a small brush to apply it everywhere. You know, you can't just be like, oh, I'm just wet my finger and put it no. So, uh, you like painting shields and flags? Challenging, also very satisfying once you get it right. Yeah. And it's forgiving. I like painting them myself. Yep. 
Yes, indeed. And good morning to you, Eric. Back for more. Come back as many times as you want. It's all the same price. Nothing. Okay, the strappies on this horse. These guys should be as fancy as the light horse or more. And the light horse all have pretty much drab color straps and so forth. This is the flag bearer. Something like a buff should be fine. Oh, that's that's really color, similar to the color. Let's see what we got here. Let's do a, can we do a gray? We could probably do a gray. It'd be all right. Maybe something like this one. Let's take a look. With the flags, I scan them, and then high quality print on paper. Ah. So then you can reuse them if you need to. That makes sense. Hey, isn't that illegal? I don't think it is. I have pretty high morality. I have no problem like taking a book and making a photocopy of it and using it. As long as you're not giving that book to somebody else, who cares? You know, I, I remember my first set of DBA rules. I made a copy of them. And I mean, I'm, hell, I'm teaching people how to play the game to sell more copies. I don't think my original should be destroyed. And then I just after a while just gave up and said, ah, I'll just buy another one if I have to. But I don't have a problem making other copies of, of something that I bought for my own use. I'm not going to give them out to anybody. I just don't want my original destroyed. You know, I'm, I'm pretty anal retentive when it comes to book, keeping my books. And in, in. I want my books like they've never been read, even though I've, I've read them. I know, I'm uptight, whatever. Um... I'm particular about my books. But anyways, Dirk, the International Court of Copywriting Things and Copying is going to come visit you in New Zealand there. It should be easy to find you. There's only like 2 million people in New Zealand. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. I have no problem with, with doing that. Um, <laughs> it's not like you're going to be selling them on the corner or even giving them to somebody. It's yours. You purchased them. You're using them. And hell, I'm like I said, I'm even. I'm using it to sell indirectly more copies of the rules. You could sell even more of them if they were written in English. Yeah, I'm gonna do this this flag digitally. I'm gonna I'm gonna find some Google image search of this flag that I want, and then I'll I'll modify it in Sketchbook, and then print it on a laser printer. It's mostly black, so. And we'll do the same thing with the Moldavian one. I might as well do them both back to back. The Moldavian one has a bull's head on it. And I think a star and a crescent. I don't remember. I haven't looked at it much. I believe it's 
yellow with a red bull's head? I don't remember. I haven't gotten there that far. We'll get the right one. It's not that difficult to find. And I'd hand paint it if I didn't have to make both sides that look the same. You know? That just takes way too much time. All my flags done that way. I do then hand paint over the metallics as the printer is not so good on metallics. So that makes sense. Metallic on the flags? I guess I haven't done a flag that has metallics on it. I haven't done that. Maybe like the Sassanids or something like that. I could see their banner having some metallics on it for sure. Oh, metallics. I'm thinking silver is probably gold. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Studio WGS, welcome. Welcome back. Happy Sunday. Happy, happy Sunday. Once we're done with this figure, before we jump on the last one, we'll go ahead and epoxy all the, Mold the Moldavian Knights, Moldavian Commander on their horses. That way it's not keeping us waiting when we go to them, because that's the next thing we're going to roll into. I guess I should do the camp first. I should do the camp before I run in the mold. I don't know what I'm going to do of those two. Because the Moldavians, I'm not going to run the Moldavians with, when I don't, with that camp. That camp is Dracula's only, so. It was a good Sunday, 8.30 p.m. now. Oh, I wish, it, I don't need that here. We need all day. 7.30 in the morning here. You guys are almost 12 hours ahead of us. Almost. Or we're 12 hours behind you.
Do I read or buy any historical miniature wargaming mags? I read them if I get them, but I don't buy them. Um, 1334 over here in the Netherlands. The land of the nethers. <laughs> Excellent. Um, there's nowhere here you can pick them up. And there's lots of periods I don't do, and there's lots of scales and I don't, that I don't do. And they're relatively expensive. I do like the pictures. I, I wish you could... I wish you could do a digital subscription to them. Um, I have some old... Magazines that I didn't buy, they were given to me. But no, I've never bought any. I mean, they're like $8 a magazine, which I get it, it's full color. But the content is stuff that doesn't really apply to me. I did, sub I did subscribe to... Um, slingshot for a year and just didn't feel like I got the value out of it there was even with that it has a significant amount of DVA presence it just didn't seem like it was a very good value um, a lot of it is a lot of it is focused on stuff that's happening in the UK and not here so that's of zero value to me and I get it I mean wargaming is bigger over there um, and um, it just didn't seem like it was a very good value. That's all. And, uh, and you know, if you've got one issue that's like dedicated to like American Civil War, well, I might as well just throw that one away and I didn't look at it. I've got, um, I got some War Games Illustrated ones from the early 90s that were given to me. And yeah, I look at stuff like that and that, that's the games I want to play. You know, the ones that have the that type of a scenery. So, I'm partially obsessed with trying to make a really, really good looking game because that's what appeals to me. So often I end up working for Dutch working hours. New Zealand. Yeah, why is New Zealand called New Zealand? Did the Dutch discover it first? That would make sense. I guess if I was that, that curious, I could look it up. Let's highlight the so some white, and then we're done with the strappings here. I haven't had any coffee this morning. I can kind of tell. I'm a little, I'm a little sluggish. Even though I don't want the taste of it. Just like Tasmania, it's named after a for explorer, Abel Tasman. Yeah. We're going to discover this and name this place, but we're not going to settle here.
The only Dutch, the only Dutch fi- stuff that I've ever played or gamed with has been when we did one twenty four hundred scare scale scare. No, no scare. One twenty four hundred scale naval miniatures. I had the Dutch Navy, or I had many ships in the Dutch Navy for the ABDA stuff in early 1942. Some interesting looking ships. And I'm not a fan of the Pacific War, but uh, I did like doing the ABDA stuff because it was multinational and it, it was kind of fun to do. De Reuter and Trump and I can't remember the names of the stories these days but American those shitty four stack destroyers Dutch explored and discovered a lot, including parts of the modern-day U.S. Yeah, that's where all the Yankees live. Those don't count. (laughs) Oh, man. You guys let those Yankees settle in there. What's what's wrong with you? <laughs> All right, we want to do um, a different color for the reins. Let's get a brown, but kind of a light brown. Yeah, I'm real sluggish. I can feel it. Yeah, a lot of people still have, I mean, most of every country that we all come from were at war with each other. I mean, my, my people couldn't stand your people for about 80 years. You don't like, you don't like doing what you're told. <laughs> so, but some people can't take a joke. Um, I put some joke out. On um, some website, somebody had made a comment. I forget what it was. It was about the English and the French. And I said something like, well, you know, the English have never beaten the French in battle. But the island French have beaten the mainland French in several battles. And some people just can't deal with it. And it's like, I mean, you just need to laugh about, you know, the history or whatever. And uh, <laughs> the... Uh, Yeah, the whole English, the whole English French thing. I think it's, I think it's funny. I think it's funny to laugh about all that stuff. That, you know, nobody should take personal because we weren't there, you know. And um, thank goodness we weren't there. Right? We can just play with these. We can play with these toys. So. Did I miss a piece of flash? I think I miss a piece of flash on here. Yep. A thousand lashes. Well, now we have to fix some of it. No big deal. And remember what brown I used. It's the monster brown from... uh, might as well pull it down. Monster Brown from the War Painter. I 
I believe it's this one. May not be. It's going to be close enough. Pa, English, French, etc. Somehow we're all part German. All of Northern Europe is made up of Germanic tribes. Yeah. Yeah, I got this one guy that I haven't seen him in a while. I hope he's okay. Um, he keeps swearing that I'm part Polish or whatever. Oh, I maybe. I don't know. As far as I know, ancestors came from Spain, so. Somewhere in there, I probably have some goth blood in me. So, hell, might be related to some of you guys from Northern Europe. I just have light colored eyes and can tan well. I do need to do a Visigoth army for that very reason at some point. You're on my to-do list. And we won't be using Little Big Man Studios for those shields. We'll be hand painting those because that sounds pretty thrilling as far as I'm concerned. I enjoy stuff like that. I don't think this was the problem. cover this up for now. Let's go back to these reins. Let's either that or not take that piece of flash off and then have it put a hole in my soul for the, like, for the next 10 years <laughs> knowing that it's there. <laughs> knowing that it's there. But I do have Dutch troops to do um, the late 1500s Dutch army because I love that period. But that's kind of a stop until until I'm retired, I think. It's just too much work to try to make a system that I'm going to be happy with gaming-wise. But I do look forward to painting that, that period. Maybe by the time I get around to it, there'll be even more cool figures to paint. Mix them in to give them the right look. The Dutch Rebellion, as they're called in DBR. Uh, I think... Yeah, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't worry about that stuff. Let me uh, take a, I need to take a little bathroom break and I'll be right back. And we'll even put that we'll be right back.
Okay, we're back. Good morning. With 3D printing, you can make your own Dutch troops. No telling what will be available by the time I retire. I don't know. Maybe, uh... I got plenty of lead. I don't need, I don't need any more figures just for variety, so... Maybe you can print them in color. Not if I don't get to pick the colors in the palette. That's the fun part I like. Pick who's on the figure. Pick what figures go in the stand. Pick what they're wearing. Pick what color it is that they're wearing. As long as I get to make those decisions. <laughs> okay, we got the horse hair to do. The back of the shield, okay. I don't put a whole lot of thought into this. Just mix up a kind of a slurry of color. And put it back here. The 3D printing, I've bought 3D printing stuff. Um, I'm just not gonna. I'm not gonna paint it. I'm not gonna do it myself. I don't have the patience. Well, there's a couple things. First of all, all the three D printers are made where. That's right. So I'm out. That automatically makes me out getting one. And um, you know, I used to do CAD. I used to do CAD in college. Um, as a matter of fact, the college I went to, the first year CAD was available, which was I think uh, 1990, 1989 something like that, I took the class and had to retake it because um, there was a configuration problem and um, with, the, with the work. So it's always a configuration issue. Well, using the actual program isn't difficult. So I, I'm, I kind of have the mentality, I think, for being able to do that kind of stuff. I just, I don't have the mentality for it doesn't work or it got configured wrong or the settings aren't right and you know, I get home from work and I think I'm going to be able to paint whatever it is that it created and it created it wrong. And I just don't have the personality type from that. So, um, funny, the only Dutch I've ever painted for myself are Napoleonic Wars. Currently painting 20 millimeter Thracians. My wife is from Bulgaria. Bulgaria! Okay, Thracians are cool. Maybe someday I'll make a Frisian, Batavian, or Saxon army. Just don't play DBA with them. They're all war banned and they're going to get hosed. <laughs> That's, you need to win some army. You need to win some battles. Pick the battles you can win, you know? So, um, <laughs> yeah. 20 millimeter ancients. Okay, I think it's probably plastics or whatever. I like 20 millimeter scale for my World War IIs. My World War IIs are all 20 mil. But I do skirmish gaming for that. so Or I used to do skirmish gaming for that. I've not a whole lot of interest in doing that again. It's just... This game is too easy. This game is just too easy to play. To, to play other stuff that isn't so easy. You know, like someone said earlier, you can't be into everything. You know? You gotta pick. You gotta pick your winners and your losers. All right, these horses are gonna have. This horse is gonna have socks on all four. It looks better on all four. Let's use a bigger brush for that. So what we're going to do is we need to find this brown. I believe it was the leather that did it. Or it was chocolate brown. It looks like a little bit of chocolate brown. It's not that big of a deal. I'd like to get it right, but it's not that big of a deal. Thracian's Auxiliary. I don't know about that either. Well, my first DB army so well to see if it's any good. At least they look good. Yeah, the Thracians are, have a high about, a, amount of our Auxilia. 
Well, you could do... Uh, there's several Bulgar armies. Like, legitimate Bulgar armies. One of them even have a knight, knights in it. Um, there's at least three... There's at least three Bulgar lists. There's the Volga Bulgars, and then there's like a... There's one that's called Later Bulgar... I, I think there's at least three of them, and they, they definitely have some mounted, but, you know, they're medieval dark age period but there's a hell of a lot more information on the Thracians for sure uh, a hell of a lot more so AB 20 miller board to a great I paid those from time to time for a change when I was doing 20s AB didn't have the variety that they have now so like I'm a big on the eastern front so they didn't they didn't make any Eastern Front Russians at the time that I was doing them. So, um, not that I mind doing other theaters, but I like the Eastern Front. Send me to the Eastern Front to game. All right, this is going to work. It's close enough. And we're going to take kind of a brown color and mix some white in it because that's going to be the the color here towards the bottom of the socks here on the horse. Yeah, I like the Eastern Front a lot. I like the desert too, but the problem with the desert is the desert is not very combined arms and not really suitable for skirmish gaming unless you're going to do night actions, which I really don't, I'm not very interested in doing. So, um, And I've got stuff for Normandy too, but I'm just not a... I'm not a big fan of playing Americans. I don't like playing something I already am. I uh, just prefer something a little bit more exotic. <sighs> okay, a little bit more white. Although I mentioned earlier, if I got back into painting World War II, I've got enough Germans. I and what I mean by enough Germans, I got like 35, 40 figures. You know, I'm doing skirmish gaming, so that's plenty. Especially for the scale that I'm doing it on. You're only you're only running a few figures each person, so that's plenty. Uh, I would probably do uh, the Maquis, which if I keep talking about, it, I'm going to pull them out or whatever. Did check out the Bulgars. Not a lot of info. A lot of figures available either. They're related to the Huns, but not sure if the Huns would look right pretending to be Bulgars. Yeah, no. Yeah, I agree with you. Probably not. You also need to make it, if you plan on building a Hun army, that they would look different enough from each other. So, that's always one of my worries. You know, you've got to make an army look different enough that if you do another one that's their neighbor... Hopefully you don't have to use the same figures, you know, at least from a distinguishing aspect. There's not a big incentive in playing, you know, painting a lot of figures that look the same. At least for me. Well, you can just be building other stuff. color that we like to use is the stoned brown. Stone brown? No, stone gray. 
Byzantines are an option as well. Yeah, they're looking pretty likely to be my next army. Fairly likely. They're definitely one of the top three. Mitch would definitely like it if I did them, so we'll see. The Byzantines, that is. Now, whether I do the... The Belisarius period, or um, the Crusades period, remains to be determined. I'd want to do the Crusades period, but I'll tell you how much I like flags. The flag, the Comnenum dynasty flag of that period, sucks. It's absolutely atrocious, with as, with as beautiful as Byzantine flags can be. The particular flag of that period is just ends up being white, red, and blue, and it's it has some geographic, some basic geograph, uh, geomorphic shapes on it. Uh, it's got tails on it, and it's really unimpressive. And you know, I mean, I guess I could use a different flag that's more impressive, but then I'm just inventing things, also. So. So we'll see. I might just go in a totally different direction than none of those. I may do an army that I hadn't even mentioned I was going to do. I don't want to think about it right now because I love daydreaming about that stuff. And that's just going to take away from time from these guys getting done. Which is not a smart move. Okay, we're just gonna do black hair with this on this horse, or blackish, very darkish hair. Uh, <laughs> good morning again. Oh, I like your little guy there, I like a happy little fellow. Probably will do Gaul or Roman army just because I have figures laying around. <sighs> The only reason I have Roman armies is because I needed them for ga certain games. I don't dislike the Romans. I just think that everybody has them, so. I built one army in 2007, 2006. And the other Roman army was done like two years later. Maybe it was 2008. Maybe it was 2006 and 2008. <sighs> This is the color that we have here. Let's take some of this to lighten it up.
All right, well, we've got to make this sash. We haven't done the sash yet. I think I'm going to do it in white. Hell, we'll even darken it with this color. We don't need it anymore. We don't need that color anymore. It's hardly noticeable. It's hardly noticeable almost to the point where I'd forgotten painting. I've skipped over painting it and it wasn't obvious that I needed to go back and do that. Mm -hmm. Let's see what we got here. Mm -hmm. Gotta get dinner. A naan, I think will be perfect. Have you had naan bread before? Absolutely, I love it. I don't know that I've had Malaysian food, but I like Indian food a lot, actually. Uh, I like curry stuff. Definitely. I like spicy food. I had Filipino food a couple weeks ago for the first time. That was interesting. Yeah, I'm not one of those, I only eat steak and potatoes people. Nah. No, I like stuff that's busy and... We had Greek food yesterday to, at a place, and the only thing that, well, I had ordered was good, but it was a couple of dishes that had cinnamon in it, and that I didn't care for. I don't care for cinnamon with meat. Not something that I like to mix together. I'm not a fan of cinnamon to begin with. It's too floral, pungent-ish for my taste. But curry stuff, absolutely. Uh, it's from an Indian restaurant. Yummy, yum. I like that stuff. I gotta do an. I gotta do an. I got an Indian army on my sites. I've got most of the figures for them. And the only reason not to do them is I think they're a little too powerful. And I'm kind of enjoying playing these wimpier armies. But I want to do face paintings on the elephants. You know, so not a lot, but just some, you know, you paint the elephant completely and then, you know, like the chalk or whatever to, you know, make them scary or whatever. I think that that would be a fun challenge. So. picked up at a flea market in uh, one of the historicons guy was had this box of stuff and I'm like oh I wonder what's in the box I start looking through there he's like whole box you have for 10 bucks I'm like dude I'm just looking in your box I'm going through the box and I'm like uh, yeah I'll take this for ten dollars because there was like 12 elephants in there or whatever plus a bunch of other stuff there's actually some Italian knights is what caught my attention when I was gonna do my condotta next before Joe showed up on the scene and he built a Kandata army. Um, so I may still build one, but my intention of doing it next is pretty low on the scheme of things when I could just be building an army that none of us have. And I didn't paint the top of the um, this stuff up here, did I? I guess I need to do that. Let's A little bit of the barrel metal showing. I don't want to do that. I don't want to be like, well... It's the same color as the, as the tip of this, so just just use the same thing. I don't want to get into that. I want to actually put paint down where the paint's supposed to be. So, um, yeah, I like spicy food. Mitch is the one that doesn't eat anything spicy. I I definitely like spicy food, as long as I like the taste, you know. Um, As long as I'm not eating any weird animal. There's just some animals I don't want to eat. But vegetables don't scare me. As a matter of fact, when we cruise, um, one of the places that we eat a lot is at the, uh, on the buffet is at Indian food because we don't have a chance to really eat that as easily here in the States. So... 
I, I don't know what the stuff, a lot, most of the stuff is called, but I like it. I like it a lot. We like it a lot. All three of us do. All three of us do. Ah, here we go. Where did I leave off with that? Yeah, before I ever had Indian food, I always, I always had a Indian food has like a bad reputation, I think, for causing things to go to the bathroom. I've never had an, I've never had a bad experience with Indian food ever. Never, never, ever. Don't expect I will. saddle showing this is what we're going to go with I'm going to use this as a base obviously we're going to darken it up some I believe this one's watery as hell yep I was right yes that's the bad bet I've never experienced it I never have I think people are just doing it wrong. I don't know. What, I don't know what it is. You know. Uh, I know that if you're eating it, it's very strong smells on your clothes. But that's you know any place that, you know has. Food that is strong in spices. But I, I happen to like it quite a bit. I mean, literally, we went on a, we went on a um, last time we went on a cruise. I think every lunch we had Indian food for lunch the whole week. So, yeah. Big fan. So, I do have the Tamil Army in my sights to do at some point mainly because of the three elephants now i don't think elephants are all that in a bag of chips i think they're cute they're fun to paint they're fun to make elephant noises when they do things but that's where it stops i'm as a control freak i don't like the fact that they cost an extra pip to move them but um and i saw a painting guide or some ideas to paint the chola army which was is a Tamil army, and the colors that these people used were really good. It was actually for a computer game, um, or mod for a computer game, and that's where I got my inspiration. I'm like, oh, that's freaking cool. And um, but it's just really, it's a pretty powerful army. So at least in in DBA terms, so that's kind of a turnoff. Um, because, you know, I already have p armies that I think are really powerful. I don't need to really grow that. I enjoy playing these irregular armies a little bit more. But at the same time, I'd like to do some face painting on elephants. And, and I don't need a classical Indian army. Everybody's got one. We have several in our group. Uh, nothing against them. Just no point in playing the same army that every, painting the same army everybody else has, you know. I should be useful in what I decide to paint next, and that's not being really useful. So. Actually, I think the Cholot had some of the had territory around where you're from. 
WGS. I believe they're they were in Malaysia. And mostly stuff around the coast. Ah, poopy diaper. There we go. Okay, let's just do the muzzle of the horse now. And they have a cool flag with a tiger on it. Another selling point. That's why I picked to do the uh, the Muslim army that I have, which is the 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 carriage, because they have a red flag. I thought that was a interesting thing. There's all kinds of different reasons you can have for building an army. So, okay, this oh nope, he's not done. We need to do a little tip of the. Thing here the Chola Empire was huge it was and nobody knows about him oh nobody in this part of the world knows about him but yeah there was a painting guy that is this this guide of all the different figures that the, he did um, for I forget what game but he did like a modif modifier and it's adding these extra units and the, and the paint palette that he picked was really really nice so I have a fair amount of the troops that I already need I've got I think I've got the fast blade and I think I just need to get the bows, get get some bow variety, and 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 I should be good to go with them. Got the elephants I want. Um, yeah, I love I love Asian armies, so you know. Exotic looking, and you know who the hell doesn't want a flag with a tiger on it? That's pretty awesome. You know, they actually make a 15 millimeter tiger. Peter Pig makes one. Put that on the command stand. I don't know if it, you could have a tiger there right next to an elephant. Elephant wouldn't freak. It wouldn't get into it. You know. Uh, in fact, it's the start of most of the Indian empires here that became sultanates later when Islam came. Cool. Yeah. So. Here's an other guy that has a flag too towards the end of the early re he's actually the early renaissance a little bit a little bit later than dva is this guy who had a, an empire there for not very long he's a mogul a mogul uh, don't quote me on this stuff i because i've looked into it and i just don't you know i'm not studying this stuff all the time but this guy named sher shah and he had a um, he had a kingdom in upper in upper india and i believe he also has um, a tiger on his flag could be but his is like a green background so hey all kinds of different reasons cool flags are definitely one of the best reasons to make an army especially if it um, has interesting troop makeup so um, okay this guy is done Dracula is done except for the hooves we'll leave that for last or whatever so we've got these two figures uh, let's get you just get you guys a zoom in here let's let's get you guys a zoom did they use elephants to hunt tigers and safaris? Probably from a vantage point. There's no doubt. Um, I mean, if I'm hunting tigers, I don't want to be on the ground. I can tell you that already. <laughs> I do not want to be on the ground. No, thank you. I don't believe in hunting stuff, but, you know. Uh, but if I had to, yeah, I don't want to be on the ground. Put them on here and then move the cardboard around. Okay, here's the standard bearer. And Vlad. Okay, let's put these guys off to the side. Let's go ahead and epoxy these figures like we said we were going to. I don't want to say I'm going to do something and then do something different. I'd rather make different sins than that. Man, I got to go to the bathroom again. That's the problem with drinking liquids is you eventually have to undrink them.
right back. Shield is amazing. I'm glad you like it. My favorite thing to do, paint shields. It's better than faces. It's better than horses. You get to do the research, make the decisions, and I love painting shields. Okay. So, we made a determination that the one that had the fanciest horse, which is this fellow right here, is going to be the commander okay so the question is of these two who gets which one so if you put that guy there and put this guy here as the banner bearer his shield gets in the way by the by the saddle so does it not get in the way here because I'd make a determination I could modify it but sometimes you need to know oh it's kind of in the way there too better here I think it's better on this horse all right so he goes here he goes there got it all right let's um let's close this up so I don't put an elbow into this or something my wet palette let's get the epoxy out friendly neighborhood epoxy those go together these go together these go together and then we'll Roll into the next. Actually, I'm going to check up on people when I'm done with this. See who's awake. And there's a little bit of coffee left over. I didn't want to drink it. I'm like, hey, can I have this coffee? I guess I could go make some, but that's going to take time from this. I feel like I definitely could use some. needles because when you're done you, if you're using a little stick you have to throw the stick away this you just clean up Five minute epoxy. I'm gonna let these guys wait a little bit because a couple of them are like sloppy on the horse. I don't want to put them on there and then he slides over. So we're gonna wait about two minutes. Let this harden up a little bit since we know who's gonna be where. Um, the
Yeah, the trick is going to be, though, is this guy with the lance. All right, is this going to be... Let's move this out of the way so we don't accidentally put a finger in it and then transfer it somewhere else. Let's take a look at this. some of it saddle off that figure there you go that's a lot better takes time you know some of these things take patience wish it was a faster epoxy maybe than five minutes but then I wouldn't have a lot of time to work on it good morning Kevin welcome happy Sunday all right a couple things we need to do let's um, let's put the general on here the commander let's close his legs up a little bit and he's still wanting to shift a little bit we we'll have to keep an eye on him so he doesn't misbehave let's put him off to the side I have to put him off camera because he's just going to be in the way here This fellow. Also off to the side. Now, there's some tricky stuff here. This harden up a little bit. Okay, we're gonna put a little dot down here by the foot, and we're gonna put some of this stuff geez, well, I'm having trouble grabbing them. Oh, this is slippery at the top of his hand. And when we put this through. We're going to push it through. And we'll join it as foot. Then we're going to take a little bit of this stuff right here and we're going to put it right around. I'll have to clean some of that up. The top of that. And then. Mount him on here. Now I'm going to take my exacto knife. And clean up some of this excess.
Okay, I'll let those guys dry. Oh. See, Russia hasn't taken over Florida as of yet. Nope. No, screw those sons of bitches. <laughs> uh, and what's crazy is the conspiracy theories that are going around on it. I mean, it's just... Some things are just too unbelievable to be true, so I don't know. I, everything, I, everything I listen to, everything I watch is always suspect now. Unfortunately. Too many liars out there. Sit these guys off to the side. And work on the next guy. We need to take a look at our reference material. I'm going to have to keep my eye on him wanting to shift here. Uh, let's add a page here. And let's go to Pinterest. Give me one second here.
I switch screens. Okay, here's one I saw. Let's see what this is. Vovode's Guards. Let's see what this says. Here's a shield. Okay, what are we going to do on based on that? It's a yellow shield. It's a yellow shield with like a squiggly from one side to the other, a little cross in the corner. We'll do that. If I don't like it, we redo it. Not a big deal. Yeah, because a little cross is in the correct corner for it to be... Uh, Some here, some here over there is a ton of information on, and some of it is hard to find anything on. So let's start off with painting this black right here. Any spots I may have missed in the priming process. All right. Let's put I guess I just totally didn't see this. All right. Do we still have yellow here? <laughs> oh, I'm on the wrong screen here. Let's get on this screen. There we go. And we have a medium brown out here. Oh, that one will work.
All right. And this has a yellow band, a white band, so it's got white next to yellow. You ever had a game night where the theme was Civil War? Everybody uses the same army. No, I don't think we'll ever have it. The closest we could have would be a bunch of hoplites. It's just boring. I certainly don't want to play that. And they could probably play different versions of the same army. But no, we try to avoid those. Could do, I guess, four, four later Imperial armies, but every later Imperial Roman armies. But nah. No, we definitely haven't. As a matter of fact, in tournaments, we try to avoid Civil War situations. So in other words, your first matchup against somebody, you know, we, you, everybody picks what army they're going to be. And then you also, I have them enter a date. So that's the date that the army is. And I do use that for, for, um, for uh, matchups. So the dates that are the closest will fight the first round. And then after that, it's winners play winners. You know, so the more similar scoring fights each other. And then if a civil war develops, well, a civil war develops. But um, I, I don't even want to build the same army somebody else has that's in my play group because it's just, I find it very restrictive. Um, but that's us. Maybe other people do like that. Um, here it is. What is it, red? It looks like it's almost red. Wow, this is uncharted territory and a weird, I'm doing weird stuff here. Can I, let's see, can I bring this thing up and then, Bring this as a, I sure as hell can. Here it is. Okay, I can have this on the same page. Perfect. All right. I don't need to use red, red. I can use this one here. This this kind of what it looks like on the picture. Um, have a, a squiggle on here. Then, because there's a tiny little bit of almost a reddish color showing. I may not like how this turns out, and I'll just have to do some research and do a better shield pattern, but this is one that came up that's apparently of the right period.
this. No, you... Uh, and I can add a little bit of white to that. Let me show you what we're looking like here. And you know what? I, I probably should go ahead and do a little cross in the corner. See if I can even see that on the screen. Mm. We need to clean it up, but it's supposed to be like a dark red border around that. You guys aren't seeing the real colors there, no doubt. Okay, see if we can zoom in on this. I didn't want to make something up out of nothing. So I'd rather do something that again, the color is kind of I'm going to be right back. I need to check on people that are awake. Just a moment.
porpoise is hauling. It sure is. He's taken off and he's holding on for dear life. <laughs> it sure is. Absolutely. Okay. So if it doesn't look like much right now, we can change our mind what the what the shield is. Can I how do I I don't know how I can show you guys this picture, but that's what the picture is. It's a it's a it's got like a squiggle in the middle of the line. Yeah, if we don't like it, we can always change the shield later. Let's just do the rest of the horse and not cogitate on that and, and see how it all puts together. We definitely don't want this guy like outshining the other guys. So let's let's see how they let's see how the shield would look. He's gonna be on that side. Oh my gosh, it's impossible to get the no, I want to move it the other way. This illogical of moving it one way as opposed to the other one. So we got Dracula that's gonna be in the middle. No, I think that shield will be fine. Once we get the rest of the horse done, it'll be it'll be good. Yeah, I think that works good. We'll have to tinker with that cross, make sure it pops a little bit more. But I think uh, I think that'll work well. So you got the banner bearer with he's got the shields of he's got the uh, Volakian, um coat of arms, Dracula Dracula in the middle, and then this other no name guy with no name. Horseman with no name over on the other side. So um, you don't want this shield to be fancier than this one. Because um, then it's like, well, why didn't we just use his personal arms? Our, our country sucks. <laughs> so, yeah. So let's paint this, hor this, this whoring, no, this hauling hor horse. The hauling horse. Well, the jacket that we're going to do on this guy, I saw almost like a, a bright type color. I don't know. This, I am not good with this multiple windows. As soon as I want to not close something, it ends up closing again. some brightly colored fellows. I'm going to use a um, I'm going to use a green. And it's like the all the way at the bottom. It's not going to go all the way up to this. We'll add black and stuff to it. So, you hear that? Like a chunk of paint that's stuck in the middle, and I'm pretty sure this one has a. A mixing ball in there. We don't need very much of this. Let's zoom out a little bit. We got our green color right here. That'll help me decide what color horse I want to do with this guy. All right. Or 
this this brush has seen better days. This guy will probably have a white sash as well. Keep that consistent. I mean, one thing to consider is this figure is probably some kind of a minor noble. So he could have some expensive fabrics theoretically I just don't want him to outshine the leader and the leader's dressed kind of somber because of who he is so it's all things to consider going to lighten this with white not with yellow hmm Do another mixture, not necessarily darker, but just of more substance. It's getting a little too thin. Thank you very much. There be coffee. Ice coffee. Like the black hell I make. Remember, these guys are done. We'll get to seal them up, base them, and all that. We'll still have the flag to do, but the flag doesn't go on until the basing is complete and all that. I'm probably going to work on the flags back to back. This guy will have a flag that is uh, mostly black. Well, basically a black flag with a red dragon on it. So we'll see. We'll see how that turns out.
All right. I may add a little bit more green. You know, let's do a test. Let's do a test. Let's make sure we don't get out of our uh, comfort zone here. Let's just assume that this is the color that I was going to start lightening up from now on. What kind of colors are we going to get from here? So let's be really careful with the white. White's very powerful. And if we start adding a little bit of white, it's okay if it goes a little gray. I'm okay with that. All right, now if I do the same thing, let's rinse this out and add a little bit more green to this color. Again, I'm, I need more substance. Hold on a second here. Let's try this. There's enough of this thick enough paint here. for what we need. All right, let's try this again. If I pick a color that has a little bit more green in it, like this, and add a little bit more, and then lighten up with, yellow, with white, what, do, what am I looking at? Well, I left black in there. I like this a little bit better. Okay. Now, now we lighten this up.
just because you grab a color that's really bright doesn't mean you need to go all the way into this. You could stop just shy of it, start tinkering with it, lighten it up from there. Just kind of a starting point. Having all these colors I have are kind of unnecessary, but it does allow you to quickly grab a starting point color you to do your mixes from. And I just have them only because I had sold a bunch of my miniatures and I just decided, well, I'll just, I'll just buy the, all, all of the Vallejo paints. Because when they came out, they were the only ones that had the little droppers, so. What's in the Ottoman army that fought Vlad? Do you have them? Oh, hell yeah. Not only do I have them, I played about 50 games with them. I love them. I love that army. Well, I don't do well with it, but I love the army. I think it's a little bit more, I think it's more important. And good morning to you, Mike B. I think it's more important to like the army you have and how it looks and then paint it how you're happy with them than if they win battles. I mean, you know, I, I can win battles with troops that look like crap. It doesn't really matter, you know. Uh, yeah, I have the, 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 the Ottoman army. Okay, so the Ottoman army is Phil Barker's interpretation of the Ottoman army. There, I had to cover myself with that. Is a cavalry general. Um, three more cavalry, four light horse, two skirmishers, a solid bow, which is the Janissaries, and then an artillery piece or a fast horde. So half of their army has either uh, skirmishers or Saloy, and their aggression four. This army is an aggression zero, I think, or a one. It's a one, you know, so they're going to win terrain every time. Uh, and yeah, they got a lot of skirmishers, but the problem with the Ottomans is going to be this. Um, they're not going to pick terrain. They have four of the you. Four of the units have light horse and another and another four that are cavalry. So they have two-thirds of their army that it's mounted and can't really deal with bad going. Um, in addition, um, these Valakians have two units of bow, which the Ottoman army can't deal with unless they get bombarded by artillery. Um, so I think they're going to be I think they're going to be good fights, but I think that I'm pro more than likely for play balance going to run the Velakians with up their artillery piece. And that way you've got the two fast bow versus the artillery piece for the Ottoman army, and I think that'll balance things out a little bit better. Um, so. Um, I think they should be okay, you know. My Ottomans are like 18 and 36 or something like that. I don't care. I love how they look. Hey, look at the bright side. The Turks aren't taking over the world. <laughs> but I love playing them, you know, regardless of, of an army's ideology, um, you know, Honestly, most of these armies probably have bad ideologies anyways. Um, they're fun to play, and, and they I, I, I love how they look. And that was a big incentive to do these guys. But um, these guys can have Hungarian allies. I have the Hungarians as well. So immediately I could start replacing. I think they're, they're just very versatile. And I'll be honest with you, I like I like Saloy. I like skirmishers. Because I'd rather play an army that has too many skirmishers than one that doesn't have any. Because when you don't have any, you end up avoiding terrain. And I'd rather con conquer it and use it as anchor points or envelop through it or, you know, I, I like I like exploiting the terrain more than avoiding it. There's no fun in avoiding terrain. That's just silly. You know, the games get a lot more creative and interesting because of the terrain, not because there's no terrain. 
don't know if that makes any sense, but. Oh, yeah. You know, the problem with minifigs is some of their folds are a little, they're to scale with the figures, right? So they're not very dominant, uh, which means you've got to create folds where there aren't any, maybe, to get things to look right. I just happen to have these figures, and I'm like, I like minifigs, and I'm like, these are perfect for the other two guys that are attending to the Vavod, the prince, and um, I think the shield's going to be just fine. I needed to be. I needed it to be simpler than the other one. I didn't want to create a shield from scratch. Not that I can't, but I want to um, be constrained by reality, if possible. Looking forward to seeing that match. It's going to be an epic match. Say in the English, ancient British army, skirmishers or chariots. Well, they. Got to have both. I mean, the ancient British already have enough chariots. So when in doubt, you want different troop types so they can deal with different situations. If, if you're, I don't have the list in front of me and I don't own the army. But if it's one of those armies where you can have even more chariots or have two Saloi, you want the two Saloi. You want a variety of different things to deal with it. I do, you know. What's a sixth chariot going to do? You're better off with a skirmisher. Ancient British is actually, for the type of army that it is, it's a very popular army. It's certainly more popular than the Gauls, or it seems like it. Maybe it's because a lot of people think that they have a that background. I mean, I don't know, I guess. I mean, I, I totally support the idea of building your people. You know, I did. My first army was feudal Spanish. And I've got two other Spanish armies I can do also. So, you know, so I get that. Um, I'd just be well not now now I would take it as a as a challenge but the tattoos man you got they got to have their their bare chest and they got tattoos so you've got a the bare chested part's cool I don't like I like building uh, I like painting muscles so um, but um, but the tattoo part I don't think I'd use a pen I think I would do them by hand I think I would do them by hand. I may have to do that. I may have to build a tattooed army. Except I want to do the Gauls. I want to do those guys that are... I want to do those guys that painted themselves blue. I mean, not everybody, but, you know, a stand of those guys. They painted themselves blue and they were naked. Just for the jokes I can come up with. The Blue Man Troop. The boys already have galls, though, so. Okay, I think we're going to leave this jacket color where it is. We could always come back and tinker with it later. But 
Has this helped us make a decision what color horse to do for this dude? Probably not. I'm going to do a lighter color horse. Not white, lighter color. Is this the cork brown? I think this is the cork brown. Brown sand. Oh, this is a watery mess. But yeah, I want, if you give it to me, I'd rather have a variety of troop types. Because you can deal with different situations. You know, what if you're forced to fight elephants? Chariots are no good. Well, not that they're no good, but, you know. And you already have five chariots. What's the sixth one going to do? It's too much of one thing. You love the chariots from a British. See, somebody else that has ancient British. I'd never build ancient British. I don't have too many ha people to have it. I do, you know, Caledonians or something like that. They've got chariots and they're same type of thing. A little bit further up. Galatians. Galatians could be cool. You know, they're Gauls down in the whatever. I got I to gotta build a naked army. Not everybody's got to be naked, but some folks. You know, just for the joke factor. You know, I got to make sure the figures aren't circumcised, though. Then, you know, it wouldn't be very accurate. <laughs> oh, yeah, I got to do it. For, I got to do it for the jokes. But, you know, I don't have any of those. Fi uh, I got some gall figures, but they're not naked. So. Just for the jokes, folks. Just for the jokes. That's what we're here for. We're here to have fun. Laugh about shit. All right, let's see where this takes us. Okay, well, it sounded watery as hell, but that's really good consistency of the paint. Um, that's almost the same consistency of coat de arms. That's actually what it looks like. Cool. All right, and of course we're not gonna we're not gonna start with that. We're going to start with add some black to it, which is damn near dead. I would go through so much black and white before I was using a wet palette that I had switched to using um, craft brands for those two. So I used like a cheapo black and a cheapo white and it worked just fine. But now with wet palette, I'm like, ah, let's use the real colors. As my painting style uses a lot of the two, especially the black. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. All right, let's paint this guy all the way over. And this, and yeah, this, this horse is hauling ass. Is there any army you guys have considered building but are afraid to because of some factor like maybe the tattoos or something like that or maybe you know you you were unsure of the color scheme or maybe they've got too much heraldry and you're scared of doing heraldry or is there some army that you've avoided because of that? Well, there's some reason that you guys have avoided building 
certain army just because you don't think you have the skill set or, or you don't want to be bothered with with some aspect of it. Let me know if you do. I'm curious to see if that's the case. The only one I've avoided is, uh, well, I don't have the troops for it either. It would be, you know, tattoos because of the whole, you know, do I use pen? I don't think I would use pen. I think I would use uh, brushes because um, it just, I got a lot better control with it. I, I know that seems strange to say, but um, I can control. The thing with the brushes is, is you may actually be better with a pen, but if you're using a pen, you only have one, um, not one color, but you only have one, um, God, what's the word I'm trying to think of? Okay, here's your pen, all right? And I'm going to paint tattoos. What can you do? That. Can you do something else? No, you can make it thicker. Can you make it thinner? No, nope. it's as thin as this, and that's it. You can't like water this down, make it a little bit more transparent. Um, I th and with the paint, you can. Um, so I think I would use, you know, a really, really dark blue uh, or some kind of blue, and then I can thin it down with uh, the magic drippings and, um, and get it to flow a little bit better and have really good control with it. Uh, you hate painting kilts. Too many wieners in the Galatians. I would love to do it. I think it would be fun. Just for yucks. You prefer Caledonians and Picti to Britons. Okay. Well, they're over there in your part of the world there, Jeffrey. And good morning to you, sir. Good to see you again. Uh, you hate painting kilts. I've never tried. I've never tried. You know, kilts are the wrong time period. They started in a time period that I'm not particularly interested in. And I don't do 1700 stuff. But there is some of that kilt pattern in like the pre-feudal Scots. I mean, obviously they do not wear kilts, but like in their capes and stuff that they use, that that's a big draw for me to try to do that. And I'm sure I will over, I would overcome and that it would look good. And I, that's like a challenge for me to do that. So um Caledonians, yeah, I've never seen somebody use do a Caledonian army there, Jeffrey. Never. Um, and, you know, their army list isn't particularly interesting, but lots of army lists aren't particularly interesting. Um, my Irish don't have a particularly interesting army list, but they're a lot of fun to play because they of how they look, and I think the Caledonians would probably be the same way. You're painting kilts right now. Mr. John Carter, welcome back. Excellent. Yeah. I think I'd like to. I'd rather paint them than wear one. <laughs> hey, it's not my responsibility to wear kilts. It's not my people. So, <laughs> but I would love to paint them. I think it would be really cool. So, um, yeah, paint, paint those little plaid things. Oh, well, you know what I say about plaid? The girls look a lot cuter in it than the boys. <laughs> I don't know that I've got any plaid anything. It's not my responsibility to my, my, not my responsibility to wear that. <laughs> uh, I'd love to paint it though. I think it'd be a challenge. I think it would look. I think I think it would look good. It would look good. It gives them. I look forward to doing some Scots. I really do. Only because of the. You know I'm going to talk like a like a freaking idiot, you know. And I'm going to catch all kinds of hell from you guys. But I still stand by my, I'm going to do a better job than most people in this country. Which I know is not much, is nothing to brag about. <laughs> oh, man. I do look forward to doing those guys. Pre feudal, I, I don't do the um, the, Bra the not the Braveheart Scots, but the um, um, the Scots common guys because Mitch has them already. You know, not that I have anything against them, just there's no reason to build an army that he already has. So, unless it was for a scenario or something like that, but. Um, I like the idea of building something for the British Isles. I mean, most of my viewers are from the British Isles. It makes sense. And, uh, you know, that's kind of your home thing. And, 
You know, you should be proud of the people who are your ancestors. So, uh, even Gallic has a Celtic pattern, not fun to paint, am I honest? Stop telling me about it or I'm going to jump right in that. I, it, I, I, that's a physical challenge I look forward to. Yeah, it does look good, but it's a lot of work, yeah. Well, you got to do it impressionistically, you know. I look forward to doing that. I really do. I would have done picks already if Mitch didn't have picks. Now, the picks he have, has, they don't look very good, okay? Um, and between the little big man studio's flags that they make for the picks, oh, that stuff is cool as shit, you know? Um, you know, with their glyphs and stuff? No. It's a tattoo horror story, you know, with having to do all that stuff. But their pictograms and stuff, freaking awesome. Um, I would have already done them as a barbarian army. Wait a second. Barbarians? Well, barbarians is anybody who's, who the fought Romans fought that are, you know, it's because they have beards. Pigs have facial hair? Or just mustaches. I don't think pigs have beards. I never understood, like, I'm going to shave, but I'm going to leave some of my hair on. You either shave or you don't shave. <laughs> I thought about it. Picks, do pigs have beards? I guess they don't. So technically, are there barbarians? <laughs> Thracians and Achaemenid Persians are armies. I won't paint myself. I learned my lesson after painting Scythians. Yeah, Thracians and Scythians have crazy patterns. Achaemenid Persians, some of the guys. See, for me, it's not painting all those crazy patterns. It's the having to come up with like meaningful crazy patterns that, that are plausible. Like the situation I've run into with the bow cases in a lot of these armies. A lot of these armies that I've been doing lately have bow cases that are the you know the bow sits in and they're ornamented and and i can't just paint them plain because it was a big deal for many cultures to have a very complicated bow case with you know adornments or a design or something like that so i have to do a design that's plausible but also not like uber complicated and impressionistic and and make them different enough who was it that had a ton of them my hungarians my Hungarians had a lot of a lot of those, and um, I finally got over it and did a scenario. You know, I I did something that I think works pretty well for them that I'm happy with, but that was the problem with the creating stuff out of nowhere. You know, and the same thing would happen with Scythians. I actually had a Scythian army. And painted one figure of them. I don't know where they are. They were a Saloy figure. And it took forever because I had to put, you know, embroidery here. and Because they have tons. You know, for people that never bathed, they, they liked really fancy dressed things, you know. Um, barbarians goes back to Greek times. Barbarians were anyone that didn't speak Greek. Well, maybe they were called something else because that comes from barba. When barba means beard, so bearded. And it can't be that in Greek because the Greeks were, you know, they had a thing for beards, you know. Um, which I think I read one time that one of the incentives, I don't know, I know I didn't make this up. I don't know if this is accurate or not, but one of the things about Alexander that was, he was the first one that did the, the whole shaving thing is, is you can't grab the other guy's beard in close combat if he doesn't have one. And you think about it and it's like, yeah, that's a pretty good point. I wouldn't want to be in close combat with somebody and somebody grab me by the beard and you can't get away, you know? Um, I don't know if that's true or not. I know I didn't make it up. I might have read it somewhere. Now, whether it's accurate or not, I thought that was kind of interesting. Grab him by the beard. I'm 
have to shave today or I'm going to have a beard. <laughs> I generally shave every other day. Sometimes I go an extra one. I don't mind it, but growing a beard is too much trouble. You got to shave all this down here. And it's just like, you got to go, I got I to gotta do it every day then. Or you just look like a barbarian. And um, it's just too much trouble. It's just easier to. I can grow a beard, so I don't need to. I don't need to to prove one, to prove anything. <laughs> oh man! We have Visigoths on the horizon. At some point, you know, the reality is, is, I'm interested in all the armies, and the fact that they're that they're good or not is irrelevant, because we tend to play things that. Give them an even fighting chance, because that's who wants to see a one-sided engagement. That's that's no fun for anybody. So, This is covered. I have no people who are, no idea who may be. Six people. Welcome. Half dozen. Yeah, I could tell that coffee woke me up a little bit. I feel much better. Compliments to the wife. I was talking about playing video games the other day and I have a few for my computer but I rarely play them because I'd rather just paint and hang out with you guys the thing about video games is if you don't have anybody to talk about the game while you're playing it it's just not any fun it's not any fun anymore um, I'm gonna tell someone hey I play this great game and you know oh yeah whatever I wasn't there it's there's nothing social in it uh, unless you're playing you know, and I'm talking about stuff like, you know, cranking up Room Total War or something like that. You know, it's it's fun for a little bit, but at the end of the day, you're like, okay, I don't have anything to show for it, and I don't really have anybody to talk to about it. So, some army seems difficult for painting. Do you have the new Curacao figures? I didn't have the privilege of those being around when I got my son, so those look really cool. The thing about the Asian armies is there's so little information that's available and a lot of the information is wrong or constantly changing that I think you have quite a bit of freedom in how you paint them. So that's, um, that's not too bad, you know. The Kurosan figures are beautiful for some. They're really cool, but I already had the old school figures that are supposedly wrong, and I converted my sum from 2.2 to 3.0 not that long ago. Well, maybe it's been three years or four years or something like that. And I just went back and used the old same wrong figures because they matched the other ones. And at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter um, to me. But... Um, yeah, there's, there's very little known. There's, if you look at any kind of like movies that uh, troops are like in, um, what's that movie? I want to say it's Hero. I haven't seen it, but I've seen parts of it. And uh, it's a hero movie that's based on um, during the time period of the Warring States Chinese, and it's the Terracotta Warrior Army. And if you look at what the pictures of the, uh, uh, or what the troops look like in the movie, 
they look freaking awesome because they got helmets and everything. And um, but you know, there's no Asian armies that look like that. Now they're probably wrong in the movie, but they still look cool. Um, but um, a lot of those early Asian armies are kind of boring looking, be, to, at least to me, because one of the one of the things that I really like that kind of makes an army look cool is headgear. And if you have an army that is generally not wearing any hats or cool helmets or anything like that, it's not a whole lot of fun to paint um, f for me. And um, yeah, when all your guys have uh, a guy with black hair and a top knot, you know, it doesn't really matter how many Asian armies you're going to paint if they're all kind of the same kind of motif or whatever. And the other thing is, as cool as the Asian armies are, at least the Chinese ones, their downfall from a painting standpoint is that their flags suck. Because um, what I've found out through the years of trying to figure out flags for some of these different nations is they, they just, or kingdoms, they just most of the time just have almost like the character or the name of the kingdom like you know western way and their character for whatever western way is and that's it not a cool dragon or you know i mean with all the interesting mythology and background that uh that a that asia has you would think that there would be better things but the chinese armies pretty much just have you know these characters that say the name of the army which is a shame but I guess you could do whatever the hell you wanted to, but I think there's an incentive to try to do things as correctly as you can, um, you know, unless you're playing hot or something like that. But yeah, Chinese armies in particular do not have good flags. It's kind of a shame, but. Hey, nobody asked him. I wasn't born yet. I couldn't have designed it for him. All right, I need to take a bathroom break. And I'll be right back. And there it is.
Middle Imperial Romans are so colorful. I have late Imperials to do. With East and a West. I guess the middle ones wouldn't look that different. In some respects. They have a whole lot of auxiliary and not a whole lot of mountain. Solid auxilia. <laughs> Run away. I just don't like solid auxilia because they just, you can't put them on the flank and they, and close doors very fast. They're just so slow. They're not slow enough. If they move two and a half base widths or something like that, yeah. up. It's going to look too similar to the other brown horse. How long have we been on here, by the way? 
two and a half hours, something like that. Jesus, almost four hours. Holy moly, we haven't gotten a lot done. Nah, that's all right. It's all good. No, we'll stop at 10, which is in a few minutes here. I've got to do some other stuff here. But, oh, might be back on later today. I like the idea of adding Roman allies to my ancient British couple blades and Artie. do ancient British go through? The well, second one is 55 BC, but now it's the Gauls. The ancient British can go through like uh, early imperial and that's it, right? You know, they, they don't fight anybody after early imperial. They're already out of the picture. When you start getting into middle, middle imperial Roman, All right, well, we're going to call this one a wrap. Thanks for hanging out with me almost for four hours here. And um, enjoy the rest of your Sunday, guys. And um, we'll catch you guys next time. And uh, happy painting. And um, 